USS Hornet Sea Air and Space Museum and today's video we are going to take you behind the scenes tour into our CIC. Okay, let's take her down now. We're going down. Okay. So it's about uh, 53 yeah, miles right. now. Well, these appear to be heading... Uh... Hi there. My name is Alan Hirsch. I served in the United States Navy from 1969 to 1973. I was on board the USS Midway, USS Kitty Hawk, two tours in Vietnam. I was not an officer, I was enlisted. Um, I was an E-5, uh, Operations Specialist. Operations Specialist basically is working in CIC. Welcome to CIC, Combat Information Center. This is with the hub, electronic hub of the ship. It's divided up into normally five different sections, but because the Hornet was a, a CVS or anti-submarine uh, aircraft carrier, it was divided into six, the sixth section being sonar. Um, We'll go into basically all the different sections one at a time, explaining what each one does and where I worked. Um, the basic first section is CATSI. They're over to our right, or my right, your left. Um, CATSI is a carrier air traffic control. Carrier traffic control is basically a 17-mile arc of airplanes around the ship, sort of like the control tower of an airport. Uh, all planes that are taking off and all planes that are landing are all controlled by CATSI. Uh, they are in communication with the Air Boss, uh, who is way up in PriFly, and with uh, the LSO, or Landing Signal Officer, who's at the end of the flight deck, controlling all the, the landings. Um, once a plane takes off from the ship, CATSI has control. They will control that aircraft for grouping them up, if they're going to be doing a strike mission, or just going out on their own. Uh, once they leave the area directly over the ship, they have control out to literally 17 miles. Once they get beyond 17 miles, they're given over to strike or air ops. That's where I worked. Strike controls the aircraft from beyond 17 miles all the way to the beach or when you're over land. An aircraft is called feet wet uh, when it's over water or feet dry when it's over land. So as long as the aircraft is feet wet, that's when strike has control. They will vector them into the closest approach point to wherever their target is. Once they get beyond that target, once they become feet dry, then the control is given over to the Army or the Air Force or the Marines, who's ever doing the spotting, uh, and we lose control of them. The aircraft will then do their mission. When they come back, uh, they will begin, once they become feet wet again, uh, then we would get back control. They would switch back to our frequency and we would get control. Um, and then I would have control up to about 20, roughly about 20 miles. Once they're within 20 miles of the ship, then I would give the control back to Catsy. So it's sort of a round robin sort of thing. The console you see here, um, let's point this one out right here. This console that you see here, that's primary air search. They're not interested in the good guys, they're interested in the bad guys. So he has to have help because he's got uh, a uh, radar scope which can see 320 miles out to sea, 360 degrees around the ship. So literally, one guy cannot have uh, control of about a 2,000 mile square area. So he has to have help. He has to have something or someone that can uh, actually aid him in looking for the bad guys. So he has four other scopes that are around here. Those are called sector radars. Sector radars will take one quarter of the scope and they will blow that up and center it on their scope. And that way they will have a much smaller area to look at so they can help out the primary air search. Uh, they also have control of what they call IFF, or Identification Friend or Foe. Uh, what that is, is a device which is on each one of the scopes. It's over here. I don't know if you can see that on there. But uh, what they do is, uh, every time our radars uh, go by an, uh, an aircraft, uh, they would ping out an IFF code, Identification Code. There is a transceiver on the bottom of every aircraft that will ping back. And that ping will let us know a four number code and will let us know that he's a friendly. If there's someone out there that does not have that code or is trying to spoof, say, a commercial airline, uh, we would know. So then you have, this is sonar or subsurface, and they tried on this ship to put in sonar, and because of the cavitation of the, uh, the props on the ship, uh, it didn't work, but they still kept it as a uh, sonar coordination center. So we would have uh, a fleet of ships that were out there doing a pattern search, and it would all be coordinated through here. There's also a section in the back of that bulkhead over there. It's called ASCAC. And they are the ones who are primary control for all operations for uh, anti-submarine work. The, uh, the last section, the sixth section, uh, is over on the other side. 
Uh, it's called uh, EW, or Electronic Warfare, and those are the guys that are analyzing enemy radars, and they are basically going to jam them. The section in front of us is surface, and they are a duplication of what's on the bridge. So everything is coordinated and duplicated or triplicated on this ship. So this is what CIC looks like during the daytime. This is not what CIC looks like when you're out to sea. Usually when you're in port or when they're working on the equipment, all the lights are on and you can see all the equipment. When you're out to sea, everything else looks completely different. Roger, Ace, take it north. Ace, Roger. We have to make a quick loop here. Uh, I'm give you here. Okay, oh, hey! Back so soon! Well, thank you for watching this video on our Combat Information Center. If you like this content, please come back next week for more. Like, comment, and subscribe, and please share this video to your friends and family. And if you have a suggestion for another video, please leave it in the comments below. If you would like your comment to take priority, we always welcome donations.